po namin Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming taglay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay ko po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na aming gagampanan na huwag maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming pagawa, ikaw po ang aming makasala. Amen. Great day, my dear learners! I am Ma'am Leila G. Santos, your TLE Livestream Teacher for today. And I am happy to virtually engage with you again. Make sure you have your learning packets to guide you for today's lesson. Are you ready? Great! Let's get started! Today, based on the most essential learning competencies by the Department of Education, our lesson 3 for CSS is Preparing and Interpreting Technical Drawing. So we are still in lesson number 3, but today, we will be focusing on the learning outcome number 2, Interpret Technical Drawing. And at the end of the session, you should be able to, number 1, identify the symbols used in making a flowchart. Number 2, create and interpret a flowchart. And number 3, realize the importance of the different flowcharts. Before we proceed with today's lesson, let us have first a glimpse of what we discussed last meeting under the following major concepts such as elements of a flowchart, basic flowchart symbols, and the benefits of using flowchart. Do you still remember our previous lessons class? Let us try to work on this review activity. Match the description of an element of a flowchart in column A to the column B. You can type or key in the letter of your answer in the comment box. You have only 5 seconds to answer every number. Let's start with number 1. It is represented by a diamond, showing a process answerable by yes or no, that requires a decision box. Your timer starts now. Time's up! My dear learners, what is your answer? Very good! Your answer is correct and that is letter C, decision. Next, let's have the answer for number 2. It is drawn in one direction, preferably from top to bottom, to keep a flowchart clear. Your timer starts now. Time's up! What is your answer, my dear learners? Great! You've got the correct answer and that is letter A, arrow line. How about the answer for number 3? It is represented by a small circle or a connector box and is labeled using letters. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is letter B, awesome! Your answer is correct! Next is for the answer in number 4. It is represented by a rectangle. It refers to an action in a business process. Your timer starts now.
Time's up! What is your answer, my dear learners? Nailed it! You've got the correct answer, and that is letter D, process. How about the answer for number 5? This is a process represented by a rectangle with double lines on each side. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is letter E, terrific! Your answer is correct. Great job, my dear learners! It seems that you've learned a lot regarding from your previous lesson. Are you now ready to learn? That's great! In order for the drawings to be understood, creators use easy-to-understand symbols just like the flowcharts. A flowchart will help you understand your process and uncover ways to improve it only if you use to analyze what is happening. Flowchart typically use symbols for a particular activity in the process. And now, my dear learners, let us try to draw the basic flowchart symbols corresponding to their specific functions. You have only 5 seconds to draw a symbol in every number. Alright, let's start with the item number 1. It shows a decision point such as yes or no or go, no go. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If you draw a diamond symbol, very good! That is correct! Next is for the item number 2. This symbol represents an individual step or activity in the process. Your timer starts now. Time's up! Did you draw a box symbol class? Great! That is correct! How about for the item number 3? It indicates that a particular step is connected to another page or part of the flowchart. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If you draw a circle class, awesome! That is correct! Next is for the item number 4. This symbol shows where an in-process measurement occurs. Your timer starts now. Time's up! Did you draw a triangle symbol class? Great! That is correct! How about for the item number 5? This indicates both the starting point and the ending point of the process steps. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If you draw an oval symbol class, wonderful! That is correct! That was so amazing! Great job! Again, these are the symbols used in making a flowchart. And now, my dear learners, let me see how far you know about creating a flowchart. Let us try to create a flowchart that shows how to troubleshoot a lead lamp from the given jumbled flowchart parts below. You have only 5 seconds to answer each part. You can type your answer in the comment box. Alright, let's start with the first procedure. 
Your timer starts now. Time's up! My dear learners, what is your answer? You got it right! That is, lamp doesn't work. How about the second step? Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is lock, log in, great! You picked the correct answer for this part. And that is lock, log in. Next, let's have the answer for number three. Your timer starts now. Time's up! Can you give the next step, my dear learners? Awesome! That is plug in love. How about the answer for number four? Your timer starts now. Time's up! My dear learners, what is your answer? Great! That is correct! Bulb burned out! Next, let's have the answer for number 5. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is replace ball, Terrific! That is correct! How about the answer for number 6? Your timer starts now. Time's up! Can you give the answer for this part, my dear learners? You nailed it! That is repair love. All of you did an awesome job. Aside from learning how to create flowchart, you should also consider how to interpret it. And these are the following steps. How do you interpret flowcharts? Number one, determine who is involved in the process. Number two, form theories about root causes. Number three, identify ways to streamline the process. Number four, determine how to implement changes to the process. Number five, locate cost added only steps. Number six, provide training on how the process works or should work. Now, you've already known on how to interpret a flowchart. What do you think are the sequence of steps that will help you through an orderly analysis of your flowchart? Let us see here the four steps that will help you through an orderly analysis of your flowchart. These are the sequence of steps that will help you through an orderly analysis of your flowchart. Step 1. Examine each process step for the following conditions that indicate a need to improve the process, like bottlenecks. These points in the process where it slows down may be caused by redundant or unnecessary steps, rework, lack of capacity, or other factors. Next is weak links. These are steps where problems occur because of inadequate training of process workers, equipment that needs to be repaired or replaced, or insufficient technical documentation. Inform the drill leader and improvise is one of the weak links. 
Next is poorly defined steps. Steps which are not well defined may be interpreted and performed in a different way by each person involved, leading to process variation. Improvise is a poorly defined step in the weak link cited above. Step 2. Examine each decision symbol. You may want to collect data on how often there is a yes or no answer at decision points marked by a diamond-shaped symbol. If most decisions go one way rather than the other, you may be able to remove this decision point. Step 3. Examine each rework loop. Processes with numerous checks generate rework and waste. Examine the activities preceding the rework loop and identify those that need to be improved. Look for ways to shorten or eliminate the loop. Step 4. Examine each activity symbol. Does the step help build a key quality characteristics into the end product? If not, consider eliminating it. Again, these are the sequence of steps that will help you through an orderly analysis of your flowchart. Now, let us proceed to its three main types. Do you have any idea, class, what are the three main types of a flowchart? Alright, let us try to guess the three main types of a flowchart by identifying the following examples. You can type or key in your guess in the comment box. You have only 5 seconds to guess each type of flowchart. Let's start with the first type. This type consists of the following letters. Your timer starts now. Time's up! My dear learners, what is your guess? Awesome! Your guess is correct and that is linear flowchart. Linear flowchart, it is a diagram that displays the sequence of work steps that make up a process. Next is the second type of a flowchart. This consists of the following letters. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your guess is deployment flowchart, great! Your guess is correct! Deployment flowchart shows the actual process flow and identifies the people or groups involved at each step. Horizontal lines define customer-supplier relationships. How about the third type? This type consists of the following letters. Your timer starts now. Time's up! What is your guess, my dear learners? Very good! Your guess is correct and that is Opportunity Flowchart. Opportunity Flowchart allows you to see where a process can be improved. This type of flowcharts separate those essential steps for making a product from those are included only to check for or fix problems. And now, which of the three types of flowchart do you think is most used today? If your guess is linear flowchart, Great! That is correct! Would you like to know how to construct a linear flowchart class? Awesome! Let us see here the 7 steps for developing a linear flowchart. How do we construct a linear flowchart? The following are the 7 steps for developing a linear flowchart. Number 1. 
define the process to be flow charted and the purpose for flow charting it. Number two, assemble the right people to develop the flow chart. Those operators, technicians, or office workers who are actually involved in the process. Number three, establish process boundaries, the starting and ending points. You should identify the major activities or sub-processes that are included in the process. You should determine what is not included in the scope of the process to remove any doubt or confusion about the boundaries. This may also help establish the scope of related processes. Number four, list the steps, activities, and decisions to be charted. If your team's not sure about the step, mark it to be investigated later. Number five, put the steps in chronological sequence. Sometimes it's easier to start with the last step and work back to the first step. Number six, assign flowchart symbols such as boxes, diamonds, and triangles. Number seven, review and title the flowchart. Once again, these are the seven steps that are very helpful in developing a linear flowchart. And we are done with our lesson for today. And to assess your knowledge regarding from our lesson, let us answer what's more an assessment part on your TLE module. Let us answer first the what's more part with directions Arrange the following steps in developing a linear flowchart by writing the numbers 1 up to 7. You have only 5 seconds to answer every item. You can type your answer in the comment box. Let's start with number 1. Review and title the flowchart. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is number 7, very good! That is correct! Let us proceed now to number 2. Put the steps in chronological sequence. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is number 5, great! That is correct! How about the answer for number 3? List the steps, activities, and decisions to be charted. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is number 4, awesome! That is correct! Next is for number 4. Establish process boundaries, the starting and ending points. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is number 3, very good! That is correct! How about the answer for number 5? Assign flowchart symbols such as boxes, diamonds, and triangles. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is number 6, Terrific! That is correct! Next is for number 6. Define the process to be flowcharted and the purpose for flowcharting it. Your timer starts now.
time's up. If your answer is number one, great, that is correct. How about the answer for number seven? Assemble the right people to develop the flowchart. Those operators, technicians, or office workers who are involved in the process. Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is number two, terrific! That is correct! You did it, my dear learners! You want more? Great! Now, let us answer the assessment part A on your TLE module with directions. Read and analyze the following statements carefully. Write pack if the statement is correct and bluff if it is incorrect. You can type or key in your answer in the comment box. You have only 5 seconds to answer every item. Alright, let's start with item number 1. A diamond symbol shows a decision point such as yes or no or go, no go. Is it a fact or is it a block? Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is pop, terrific! That is correct! Next for item number two. Interpreting your flowchart will help you to form theories about root causes. Is it a fact or a block? Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is fuck, you nailed it! You've got the correct answer. How about the answer for item number three? A linear flowchart shows the actual process flow and identifies the people or groups involved at each step. Is it a fuck or it is a block? Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is block, that is correct! It should be development flow chart. Next is for item number four. One of the steps in developing a linear flow chart is to assign flow chart symbols such as boxes, diamonds, and squares. Is it a fact or a block? Your timer starts now. Time's up! If your answer is block, great! That is correct! It should be boxes, diamonds, and triangles. How about the answer for item number 5? Weak links are the steps where problems occur. Because of inadequate training of process workers, equipment that needs to be repaired or replaced. Is it a fact? For it is a block. Your timer starts now. Time's up. If your answer is pop, awesome. You've got the correct answer. Great job, my dear learners. Reward yourself with this terrific club. Assignment, please work on what I can do lesson 3, week 6 on your learning packet. Your subject teacher will check your assignment tomorrow in your class discussion. So don't miss the class. Once again, I am Mam Lele G. Santos, your TLE livestream teacher. Have a great day, my dear learners. <laughs>